okay so let's start with a super quick revision of the next chapter that is appeals and revision i hope whatever lectures we have uploaded you are using it and you are getting a benefit out of it if yes do let me know in the comments uh, it also brings a smile on my face while i read your comments uh, yes so let's start with this particular chapter that is appeals and revision a uh, very simple chapter very interesting chapter uh appeals and revisions are covered from section number 107 to 121 okay 107 to 124 uh, 121 of the cgst act similar provisions have been made applicable for the sgst provisions also and even to igst okay now there is going to be a particular hierarchy okay just try to understand that hierarchy for filing the appeals okay as you must have seen in the chapter we are going to discuss about two things one is appeals and second one is revision okay first as of now i am just talking about appeals okay let's not confuse it let's not mix too many things together okay now first of all if there is any order can you see i'm just highlighting it okay if there is any order which is passed by adjudicating authority okay ma'am what do you mean by adjudicating authority so adjudicating authority is your remember in the last chapter i told you last to last chapter i told you adjudicating authority is your uh, uh, superintendents then above that is your deputy commissioner or assistant commissioner and above that is your joint commissioner and additional commissioner see here i have written superintendents deputy commissioner assistant commissioner and above that is your additional commissioner or joint commissioner these people these people are considered as what these people are considered as your adjudicating authority who are going to pass the order or who are going to give the decision okay now your very higher level of authorities like your board cbic or your advance ruling authority or authority for advance ruling revisional authority then your appellate authorities etc these people are not okay these people are not your adjudicating authority this is what is given in the definition okay this is what is given in the definition of this adjudicating authority that is cbic okay revisional authority authority for advance ruling appellate authority for advance ruling appellate authority which we are going to study further in the chapter or appellate tribunal these people are not adjudicating authority that they are telling okay so just to simplify it and just to uh, you know make you understand that's why i've written the name of the authorities here that these people will therefore be considered as adjudicating authority okay everyone repeat with me lowest level superintendents okay next level is assistant commissioner or deputy commissioner and above that next level is your assistant commissioner uh, sorry additional commissioner and joint commissioner these people will be considered as what these people will be considered as adjudicating authority now <laughs> if they have passed any particular order okay and if uh, any of the party either the taxpayer or the department okay department means the above level of officers that is above these people above these people also there are officers like like your commissioner principal commissioner etc if they are not happy that is either the taxpayer or the department above officers are not happy with the order passed by the adjudicating authority then they can go and file an appeal before the appellate authority okay appellate authority aa this is your first level of appeal okay this is your first level of appeal where you are going to the appellate authority if you are not happy with the order passed by appellate authority then you can go to the appellate tribunal which is nothing but gst appellate tribunal or you can call it as gst at okay so this becomes your second level of appeal then in uh, once the order is passed by the gst at then you have got the next level of appeal that is the third level high court okay and then you have got the fourth level of appeal that is the supreme court okay in some cases from gst at we can directly jump to supreme court and in some cases we have to follow the hierarchy okay i'm not giving you the detail now because anyway we are now going to do it in the chapter but are you clear with the four levels of appeal yes everyone first order will be passed by adjudicating authority then go and file the appeal before the appellate authority then go before the appellate tribunal then high court and then supreme court this is the basic hierarchy are you clear with this now let's understand each one of the level in detail okay everyone in this revision lecture to like in a faster manner but in a detailed manner i'm just trying to cover it for you okay everyone the first section that is section number 107 which talks about appeals to the appellate authority okay now this up first level of appeal appellate authority 
to this particular authority appeal can be filed either by the taxpayer or appeal can be filed by the department okay if the appeal is filed by the taxpayer taxpayer can go and file the appeal in this form that is uh, gst apl uh, 01 gst apl 01 form in this the appeal can be filed okay this has to be filed within three months from the date of communication of the order means whenever we came to know about the adjudicating authorities order from that day within three months we can go and file the appeal to the uh, appellate authority and if there is a sufficient cause then this delay can be condoned by a period of one month are you clear with this yes now generally generally this appeal is filed generally this appeal is filed electronically okay if you are filing it electronically gst apl 01 immediately after filing a provisional acknowledgement is generated okay provisional acknowledgement is generated on the gst portal now if the order against which you want to go for appeal against whose order you wanted to go for appeal we wanted to go for an appeal against the order of adjudicating authority now if his order is available on the gst portal okay then in such a case then in such a case your date of provisional acknowledgement will be considered as date of filing the appeal okay but if the provisional acknowledgement oh, sorry but if the order of the adjudicating authority okay against whom you want to go and file an appeal if that is not available if that is not available on the portal uh, then in that case the taxpayer will have to go and file the taxpayer will have to go and file the self-certified copy of that particular order within a time period of seven days of provisional acknowledgement if filed within seven days then the date of provisional acknowledgement will be considered as date of filing if filed late then the date of filing this self-certified copy of that old order will be considered as a date of filing the appeal so uh, we filed the appeal in gst apl 01 as soon as we filed the appeal provisional acknowledgement was issued okay final acknowledgement uh, will be issued once the copy uh, order copy of the adjudicating authority is available either on the portal or when you go and manually submit it okay if we have done the submissions on time then in that case whenever the provisional acknowledgement was issued okay that will be considered as the date of filing the appeal if we went and submitted the adjudicating authorities order copy late then the date of final acknowledgement or whenever we went and submitted that order copy to the uh, appellate authority that date will be considered as the date of filing the appeal okay and then recently in this for may 24 exam and onwards an uh, amendment was introduced here that suppose if all this whatever procedure i told you that was for filing the appeal electronically okay suppose if suppose if the old order copy of adjudicating authority against whom we are going and filing the appeal if that is not available okay or if the commissioner tells us okay or if the commissioner has so notified by way of a notification that appeal to be filed manually then in that case appeal can be filed manually in form number gst apl 01 along with all the relevant documents Okay, and whenever you have filed the appeal and the provisional acknowledgement is issued, that date will be considered as if your appeal has been filed. Ma'am, why is this date of filing the appeal so important? Because further time periods will depend on the date of filing the appeal. Are you clear with this? Yes. And uh, yes, whenever you are going and filing, suppose if the order copy, order of adjudicating authority is available on the GST common portal, well and good. Okay, if it is not available, then the appellant is required to submit it okay it has to go and submit it manually to that particular appellate authority that will be submitted that will be submitted in uh, form number in that will be submitted manually and then a final acknowledgement is given to the appellant that is in form number gst apl 02 are you clear with this yes Achha. then after that one very very important thing is whenever the taxpayer is going and filing an appeal before the appellate authority at that time he is required to pay a mandatory pre-deposit okay some amount of taxes is required to be paid to the department only then appellate authority will accept your appeal otherwise no okay if you don't pay this then the appellate authority or the department can start with the recovery proceedings there will be no stay on your recovery proceedings even during appeal okay so some amount of mandatory pre-deposit has to be paid we will study it later how much amount of mandatory pre-deposit is required to be paid okay Achha. second part is when the department is going and filing an appeal if the department goes and files an appeal when, means when the department is not agreeing with the decision given by the uh, 
uh, adjudicating authority then uh, it can do so now who will go and file the appeal from the department can we say adjudicating authority were very lower authorities superintendent assistant or deputy commissioner additional or joint commissioner now above that that is commissioner level persons okay they will check the order which was passed by the adjudicating authority they will check the legality of it and if it is of the opinion that the decision is against the department okay if the decision is against the department then the commissioner will tell its lower level authorities please go and file the appeal before the appellate authority and they can file the appeal within six months from the date of communication of the order and this delay can be condoned by a further period of one month if there is any sufficient cause are you clear with this okay and when the department is going and filing the appeal they will go and file the appeal in form gst apl 03 okay first procedure that i will tell you for electronically department will file the appeal electronically okay as soon as the appeal is filed electronically provisional acknowledgement is issued to the department Okay, now if suppose the order of adjudicating authority is available on the common portal, okay, if it is available uploaded on the common portal, well and good, final acknowledgement will be issued to you, but the date of provisional acknowledgement, the old date will be considered as the date of filing the appeal, okay. Uh, and suppose if suppose if the order or decision against which we are going and filing the appeal, if that is not available on the common portal for the appellate authority to take the case ahead then the department will have to go and file the self-certified copy of that particular order within seven days of filing the appeal okay if we file it within seven days then the date of provisional acknowledgement will be considered as the date of appeal if we file it beyond seven days after seven days then in that case whenever you go and submit your cop or self-certified copy of order of adjudicating authority means when the department is going and submitting it that date will be considered as date of filing the appeal okay if the uh, if we are not filing it electronically then it can be filed manually also department can also go and file it manually if the commissioner has so notified or if the order copy is not available on the common portal then the entire thing can be done then the entire thing can be done manually by submitting the relevant documents in above you know what was happening in electronically either everything was happening online that is when the order copy is available on the gst portal etc everything was done online or partially it was done online and partially it was done offline means you filed gst apl 03 online but then later you submitted the self-certified copy offline so here in these two cases it was partially online and offline or alternatively if the commissioner is so notifying then you can do everything manually also okay that was the amendment and yes whenever the department is going and filing the appeal at that time there will be no requirement to pay any pre-deposit pre-deposit of taxes payment of taxes can obviously be made applicable on only on the taxpayer so we cannot ask the department to pay any pre-deposit are you clear with this now listen either the taxpayer or the department has filed the appeal now the ball is in the court of the appellate authority appellate authority will uh, uh, give opportunity of being heard to both the parties it can give adjournments for hearing the appeal but not more than three it will consider all the facts and figures and then it will pass the order okay either it can confirm the old order it can modify the old order or it can annual cancel the old order and suppose if because of appellate authorities order if the tax liability is increasing then please give reasonable opportunity of being heard to the taxpayer before passing such an order are you clear with this and suppose if the appellate authorities of the opinion that oh god this is a case of section 7374 remember those tax short paid tax not paid erroneous refund and all those cases if it is a case of section 7374 then appellate authority cannot pass the order before issuing the show cause notice under section 7374 and for issuing the uh, show cause notice under section 7374 it will also have to keep in mind that whether the time period is still left to pass that particular show cause not to issue the show cause notice or it has already become time barred if it has already become time barred then you cannot do anything okay means the appellate authority cannot do anything now it cannot issue the show cause notice and the proceedings will have to be totally dropped are you understanding this Achha, now listen before the appellant before the appellant gets the show cause notice or before the order is passed by the adjudic uh, by the appellate authority if it is of the opinion that appeal should be withdrawn then they can go and make an application and the uh, to the aa and the appeal can be withdrawn okay but if the aa has already issued the final acknowledgement of accepting your appeal then whether it should be withdrawn or not that will be subject to the permission given by the appellate authority yes now uh, we studied the time limit for filing the appeal before 
the AA. When the taxpayer goes, he has to go within three months plus one month. When the department is going, department is given a time period of six months plus one month. Now the matter comes to the AA. Now AA should give the final decision within how much time? It should try to give the decision within a time period of one year from the date of filing the appeal. One year from the date of filing the appeal. What will be the date of filing the appeal? If the order copy of adjudicating authority was available on the common portal, then date of filing the appeal was date of provisional acknowledgement. Okay, if the order copy was not available on the portal, but we submitted it manually, self-certified copy, we submitted it within seven days of filing the appeal. Date of provisional acknowledgement will be the date of appeal, date of filing the appeal. And suppose, but if we did not submit it within seven days of filing the appeal, the self-certified copy, then the day when we are going and submitting it late, that date will be considered as the date of filing the appeal. And from that day, within one year, it should try, appellate authority should try to dispose of that particular appeal. Okay. And once the appeal is disposed of, then the order copy will be sent to everyone. Okay. Means it will be sent to the appellant who filed the appeal. It will be sent to the opposite party respondent. And plus it will also be sent to the adjudicating authority also. Because again, that particular person's order, we gave a decision. Are you understanding this? Okay, now the most important thing here is who is the appellate authority? Okay, who will be the appellate authority? Now see everyone here, this is something very, very important. Just try to understand. Do you recollect I told you who is the adjudicating authority? Yes, adjudicating authority is superintendent. Adjudicating, yo, what happened? Hmm. Adjudicating authority is superintendent or deputy or assistant commissioner or additional or joint commissioner. These three people are your adjudicating authority. If we want to go against their order, okay, if we want to go against superintendent and deputy or assistant commissioner, we have to go before JC appeals or above. Okay, joint commissioner, not normal joint commissioner, joint commissioner of appeals or above. And if we want to go against additional or joint commissioner, then we'll have to go to the commissioner of appeals. Just like in income tax also, you have na, CIT appeals. Same way, you're also commissioner of appeals. These people will be what? These people will be your appellate authority before whom we are going and before whom we are supposed to go and file the appeal. Are you clear with this? Yes. Okay. So this was all about your section number 107. Okay. 107 where the appeal was filed before the appellate authority. Now, Another point which is going parallelly, okay, another point which is going parallelly with appellate authority is revisional authority. Okay, now listen, there is the revisional authority which is established under your GST law. Okay, now revisional authority is higher authorities from department only. They are not from appeal. Okay, revision is not appeal. Okay, appeal was totally different, revision is totally different. Appeal will be done by the appellate authorities. Okay, but revision will be done by revisional authorities who are the higher level departmental officers only. So, the revisional authority either Suomoto or on the basis of information received from other commissioners. Okay, it will check the order which was passed by the adjudicating authority. Okay, it will check the order which was passed by adjudicating authority and if RA is of the view that the order which is passed by adjudicating authority is erroneous. Okay, why is it erroneous? Uh, because it is prejudicial to the interest of the department. Means department person is telling that adjudicating authority gave the decision in favor of the taxpayer. It did not give the decision in favor of the department. And it such an order is illegal and improper. Or if it is of the opinion, if the RA is of the opinion that this order has not considered some material facts while passing the order. Okay. Or, or. In consequence of observation of CAG, Comptroller and Auditor General. Okay, when means some observation was given by the CAG on that basis of RA is of the opinion that the order of adjudicating authority or the decision of adjudicating authority should be stayed, should be paused. Then in such cases, then in such cases, uh, the mat, the revision authority, revision authority will revise the order which was passed by the adjudicating authority revise means again it can enhance it can modify it can annual okay and then revision authority is going to pass the final order which will contain the final amount which is due from the taxpayer but definitely yes if the amount is increasing 
after ra has done the revision if the amount is increasing then robh should be given to that particular taxpayer before passing the final order and yes just like aa's order was appealable further similarly even ra's order is further appealable before the at okay so whenever adjudicating authority gave the order either appeal can go under section 107 or revision can be done so moto by the revision authority under section 108 are you clear with this okay now there are certain restrictions okay there are certain restrictions uh for doing this revision okay what are the restrictions for doing this particular revision first of all uh for doing this revision there are certain orders which cannot be revised okay that list of orders is given under section 121 when we do 121 section number i'll tell you about that okay next one next one any particular matter any particular matter which is pending in appeal that cannot be revised okay if there is any particular matter which is pending for appeal before aa before at before high court before supreme court then ra cannot interfere in between ra is very small okay so ra cannot interfere in between but can there be such a possibility that uh, we went for appeal there were six matters totally only for four matters the appeal was decided and two matters were not at all subjected to appeal okay so for those two matters which were not subjected to appeal can we go for revision for those two matters means can the revision authority do the revision for those two matters yes definitely it can do the revision of those two matters and there will be a time period for completing the revision of these two matters that is either 3 years from the date of adjudicating authority's order or 1 year from the date of appeal order whichever is later okay 3 years from the date of original order of adjudicating authority or or 1 year 1 year from the date of appeal order appeal order for those four matters out of these two whichever is later within this much time the appeal of uh, the revision of those two matters can be done by the revisional authority right and suppose if there is any particular matter normally normally which was not at all which had not at all gone into revision uh, which had not at all gone under appeal okay means the order was passed by adjudicating authority and no appeal etc nothing no one went to aa etc then in that case revisional authority can definitely come and do the revision but it cannot do the revision for 6 months okay means as soon as the order is passed by the adjudicating authority after that the revisional authority will have to wait for a period of 6 months because maybe the department can go for an appeal 6 months time period was given for appeal okay so please wait for 6 months please don't start the revision for the first 6 months okay but as soon as 6 months get over means the time for filing the appeal has got over after that you can do the revision but the revision should be completed within a time period of 3 years from the original date of the order of from the date of communication of the order of uh, adjudicating authority so basically whenever the adjudicating authority's order was communicated for the first 6 months the revision cannot be done for the next during the next two and a half years okay ma'am how did you get two and a half years i told a total time period of 3 years right out of 3 years from the date of communication of the order for the first 6 months revision cannot be done so for the next two and a half years the revision can be done that is a time period basically for completing the revision if not done then revision cannot be done at all are you clear till here yes uh, examples for that etc is given in our book sufficient examples we have included in the book yes now listen whenever whenever revision proceedings are going on by the revisional authority okay and on that matter okay there is some case there is some appeal case which is going on which is going on against uh, which is going on in someone else's case okay before before let's say appellate tribunal or high court okay my matter is there with the revisional authority same matter okay same matter in some someone else's case is pending before the uh is going on before the appeal authorities that is before appellate tribunal or high court etc okay and now that appeal has been disposed of that is some other clients appeal has been disposed of but same matter okay and that appeal was in favor of the taxpayer so now i went on running to the revisional authority and i told to the revisional authority sir see same case and the decision is in my favor so revisional authority will say wait the department is going to contest it again before the next level of appeal authority i said okay so then sir let's wait now till the next level of appeal authority gives us the decision 
example if the old appeal decision was given by the at now can we say department will go and file the appeal before high court or if the old decision was given by the high court now the department will go and file the appeal before the supreme court so we will have to wait till the time the decision of the next level of authority comes so whatever is the time okay whatever is the time uh, between the decision given by the lower authorities till the time between the decision given by the higher level of authorities can we say we will have to wait the taxpayer as well as the revision authority will have to wait so that much extra time will be available remember we had to complete it within three years from the date of communication of the adjudicating authorities order so in that we are going to get an extension of such extra time are you clear with this and plus if there was any stay given by the court or tribunal in between this uh, six months and three years then that extra time also we are going to get for the purpose of doing the revision yes and yes also remember revision can be done only once and once the order has been revised it cannot be re-revised understanding this yes so if you want okay if you want i can just summarize the things till here so that we will be uh, before that we'll just complete this who is your revisional authority uh, revisional authority like I told you it is not your appeal authority ok so these are higher officers from your department only so if AA was your superintendent or deputy or assistant commissioner then your revision will be done by AC or JC additional commissioner or joint commissioner that is next level basically ok and if the adjudicating authority was additional or joint commissioner then the revision can be done by the next level that is principal commissioner or commissioner ok everyone here just try to understand this Sub first level is your adjudicating authority yes can you tell me who is your adjudicating authority superintendent is your adjudicating authority deputy commissioner or assistant commissioner is your adjudicating authority and additional commissioner and joint commissioner is your adjudicating authority okay if we want to go for appeal we will have to go to aa if we want to go for revision then revision will be done by the revisional authority Okay, revision means we cannot go and apply for revision, but revisional authority will sue or to interfere in between. Are you clear till here? Yes. Now, who is your adjudicating? Uh, who is your appellate authority? Appellate authority means someone from appeals, right? Someone from appeals. Do you recollect for these two? For these two, joint commissioner of appeals or above, right? And for this, it is going to be commissioner of appeals who is going to be your appellate authority and for revisional authority for revisional authority who is going to be your revisional for these two levels it is going to be this authority that is additional commissioner or joint commissioner and for this the revisional authority is going to be commissioner or principal commissioner are you clear till your yes now uh, one more thing which i would like to add in this revision only for the purpose of your re-revision is whenever uh, we are going for whenever the taxpayer is going to the appellate authority for appeals okay then in that case we can go within how much time three months plus one month when the department is going department can go within six months plus one month okay revisional authority will do the revision on its own it cannot do the revision for the first six months after the order of adjudicating authority but it has to complete within a total period of three years from the date of communication of the adjudicating authorities order are you clear till here and for the completion of time period for adjudicating authority it was given an advisory time period of one year from the date of filing the appeal to complete the appeal provisions are you clear with this yes this was the entire revision again that we have done now going on to the next level of appeal next level of appeal is going to be before the gst at okay gst at now first of all how is this gst at constituted i'll just show you in a summary diagram uh, this gst at at stands for your uh, appellate tribunal okay gst at is in two parts one is something called as principal bench okay and second one is something called as state bench okay earlier old names were there like regional national etc now 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 i'm i'm teaching you the amended provisions only okay in GST AT, GST AT is divided into two benches. One is your principal bench and the other one is your state bench. Okay, this is state level bench. This is national level bench, principal bench. Now, there are going to be certain persons who are going to be forming part of these benches who is who are going to listen to the appeals. Okay, now before that first doubt, why will why do we want GST AT? 
okay why do we want gst ad because can we say any of the person either the department or the taxpayer can they be aggrieved by the order passed by aa or can they also be aggrieved by the order passed by revisional authority yes so for that purpose we need an next level of authority that is your gst ad okay now who all are going to sit in this gst ad just try to understand so in principal bench okay in principal bench there will be one president okay then one judicial member having knowledge of law just like your judge etc and one technical member from the state and one technical member from the center one from center one from state so this way four people okay four people will be there in the principal bench and similarly for state bench you are going to have two judicial members one technical member of the center one technical member of the state coming to total of four members here also okay in state there is no president in state there is no president there will be a person called as vice president okay there will be a person called as vice president who will be the senior most member out of these two judicial members so he is going to look after the state bench and president is going to look after principal as well as the state bench this is how your gst at is formed are you clear with this okay so whenever any person is aggrieved by the order passed by aa or ra then the matter goes to gst at in gst at either it can go to principal bench or it can go to the state bench this will be decided by the president that the matter will go to whom very clear with this yes now one very very important point here is if the matter relates to or if the dispute relates to place of supply okay means some order was passed by aa or ra and i have i am a taxpayer i have dispute on that particular order and that is a dispute relating to place of supply then the matter cannot go to the state bench you already know igst provisions will apply therefore in that case the matter can be dealt only by the principal bench okay so if it is a pos matters it can be dealt only by the principal bench if it is other matters then it it can be dealt either by the principal bench or by the state bench are you understanding this yes all those things are written here now listen whenever any particular case comes to gst at okay whenever any case comes to gst at in such cases in such cases uh, your case will be heard by one judicial member and one technical member okay when uh, see these people are anyway sitting in the benches okay one judi uh, one uh, two judicial member one technical one technical these people are totally sitting in the benches but it is not necessary that for every case everyone should give their decision okay so one case one case is decided by one judicial member and one technical member okay in some cases if it is a less complicated case small amount case etc then it can be decided by single member bench also that is only one member will be from the gst at can also decide the case are you understanding all these things everyone yes see here it's written now when the case can we say this will become very simple when the case is decided only by one member out of gst at now when will this apply okay this will be applicable when the amount of tax which is there under dispute if that if that is up to rupees 50 lakhs plus it does not involve any question of law plus the president of that principal bench says that a uh, single member bench works and plus all the other conditions which are given gets fulfilled if all these four points get fulfilled means where the tax amount is less not involving question of law and president has also given its approval then in that case a particular case a particular case can be dealt by single member bench that is either one judicial member and one or one or one technical member okay but in other cases let's say if it involves question of law or let's say the amount of tax is more than 50 lakhs or if president says that no single member bench does not work then in such cases your case will be decided by two members that is one judicial member and one technical member are you clear with this okay decision is normally taken by majority okay if there is any difference of opinion here okay if there is any difference of opinion here then depending upon benches that is either principal bench or state bench the president will introduce one one more members okay let's say if these members are from the principal bench then the president will include one more member from the principal bench and then there will be total three members now and then they will take a revised majority suppose if these members are from the state bench then the president will include one more member from the state bench and then there will be three members and then we will take a 
revised majority this is how the decisions are taken okay suppose if suppose if in your uh, gst 80 council okay uh, not council in your constitution of gst 80 suppose if there is a death of any particular person or let's say there is resignation of any particular person and temporarily temporarily the place is vacant okay if temporarily the place is vacant then rest of the members can continue to take the decision means the proceedings will not become invalid okay suppose if you know there is a death of any other member or there is a resignation retirement of any other member then we might need some more time to fill that vacancy till that time remaining members can continue and they can take the decision okay similar things we have studied in our law also and the next point which is coming up here is the powers which are there with the appellate tribunal okay the powers which are there with the appellate tribunal now appellate tribunal has got all the powers as vested in civil court means it is regulated by a uh, code of civil procedure but it is not just restricted it is not just bound to follow the civil procedure it can it is regulated by its own procedure also means it can make its own procedures also it can regul it can get itself regulated by its own procedures also are you understanding this yes now this was just the constitution of gst 80 we did not study anything about filing the appeal before gst 80 now can you tell me when can we go or who can go and file the appeal before gst 80 can we say either the taxpayer can go and file the appeal before gst 80 or can we say even the department can go and file the appeal before gst 80 okay whenever they are going and filing against whose order can they go they can go against the order of appellate authority or they can go against the order of revisional authority. Are you clear with this? Okay, now when the taxpayer is going, taxpayer can go within three months and this delay can be condoned by another period of three months. Okay, from the date of communication, communication of whose order? Communication of the AA or the RA's order. And yes, whenever it is going, whenever it is going to the GST 80, it is again required to pay some pre-deposit some mandatory pre-deposit is required to be paid just like we had paid it at the earlier level also here also the taxpayer is required to pay that particular amount and this appeal this appeal will be filed in form gst apl 05 rest provisions will be same as that of your aa that is gst apl 05 is formed you can file it electronically okay once it is filed electronically and if the copy of aa or ra's order is available on the common portal final acknowledgement will be issued date of provisional acknowledgement will be considered as your date of filing the appeal okay if not if the copy of aa or ra's order against which we are going and filing the appeal if that is not available on the portal you go and submit you go and submit the self certified copy of it within 7 days of filing the appeal if you go within 7 days date of provisional acknowledgement will be considered as date of filing the appeal if not the day when you go and submit that self certified copy that will be considered as the date of filing the appeal okay same provision same to same provision which we had studied earlier okay now listen sometimes it can so happen that when you go and file the appeal uh, uh, when the taxpayer goes and files the appeal before gst 80 gst 80 can even refuse it okay when will gst 80 refuse it when the amount of tax dispute does not exceed rupees 50,000 means they are telling that it is a very petty amount. So, GST 80 may refuse it and GST 80 will say that whatever order was passed by AA or RA that is full and final. Okay. And whenever the taxpayer goes and files the appeal, okay, then in that case an opportunity is also given to the department that is the opposite party to submit something called as memorandum of cross objection means if department now wants to say something against that particular taxpayer the department should be given an opportunity to submit it within a time period of 45 days from the date when they come to know that appeal has been filed by the taxpayer so so when i come to know that taxpayer has filed the uh, appeal then department also has got the right to submit the memorandum of cross objection within a time period of 45 days and this can be further condoned by another period of 45 days if there is a sufficient cause are you clear with this and yes now just like i told you whenever the taxpayer is filing the appeal he has to pay the pre-deposit plus extra extra the taxpayer is also required to pay the fees fees is equal to rupees 1000 for every 1 lakh of tax Okay, for every 1 lakh rupees of tax, 1000 is the amount of fees that you have to pay. Suppose if tax is 1 lakh 20,000, then you have to pay 2000 rupees as fees for filing the appeal before the GST 80. 
Are you clear with this? This was when the appeal was filed by the taxpayer. Now, when the appeal is filed by the department, can department also be aggrieved by the decision given by uh, AA or the RA? Yes, then it can go and file the appeal within a time period of 6 months with no further extension. Okay, so total period of 6 months is given to the department to go and file the appeal. Department can go and file the appeal in GST APL 07. Okay, again, department is not required to pay any pre-deposit amount plus the department is also not even required to pay the fees. Okay, and then whatever is the date of filing the appeal from that day within one year, GST 80 should try to dispose of that particular appeal. Are you clear with this? Yes, and suppose if we notice that any person, either the taxpayer or the department, if they notice that there is some mistake, uh, what do you say? Uh, if there is any error which is evident, which is clearly evident from that order that there is some mistake in the order of GST 80, then we can go and apply to the uh, taxpayer department or the GST 80 Suomoto if it comes to know that there is some mistake in its order, then in such cases, then in such cases it can do the rectification of mistake. Eh, that is not appeal. Huh? That is just rectifying its own order. So fees etc. is not applicable for this and this rectification will be done from the within 3 months from the date of his order. GST 80 is order. Within 3 months, it is doing the rectification and within 3 months, it can be done. And suppose if because of this restriction uh, rectification, if the tax liability increases, if the tax liability increases, then please give ROBH to that particular taxpayer. Are you clear? Tell your everyone. Yes, so this was basically all about your appeals which we filed before appellate authority and before the GST 80. We have studied all the time periods in this particular chart that we have done. Now listen, a few common provisions which were which are applicable to the appeals that we have filed before the appellate authority and before GST 80. Now do you recollect in both of these sections when we studied, we discussed something about pre-deposit, mandatory pre-deposit amount which a taxpayer, only a taxpayer is required to pay to the AA and to GST 80 before he goes and files an appeal and that is mandatory. Okay, if you do not pay this, if you do not pay this, your appeal will not be accepted and the recovery proceedings are going to start. Now, how much amount, how much amount of pre-deposit is required to be paid? Okay, so first case is when we are going and filing the appeal before the appellate authority, then you are required to pay a pre-deposit of, first of all, 100% full amount of tax, interest, fine, fees, penalty, whatever is admitted. Okay, means whatever is accepted by the taxpayer, pay 100%. Everything, tax, interest, penalty, fine, fees, everything. Okay, and plus, plus you are also required to pay 10% of the remaining tax on which there is a dispute for which you are going for appeal. Okay, 10% of the tax amount, not tax plus interest plus plus plus, no. Your, your, in the second level when you are paying, it has to be 10% only of the disputed tax amount. Okay, and this 10% will be restricted to 25 crore in case of CGST. Okay, CGST, SGST each and when it goes to IGST, then this amount will be restricted to 50 crore. That is the disputed amount 10%. This will be restricted to this particular limit. This is when you are going and filing the appeal before the appellate authority. Similarly, when you are going and filing the appeal before the appellate tribunal, at that time also that person was required to pay some pre-deposit. Okay, how much? First of all, full liability that you have admitted, that is tax, interest, penalty, fee, fine, everything, 100% of it you have to pay. Plus, double, 20%, 20% of the tax which is in dispute, means which you have not accepted, 20% of that basic tax amount you have to pay and this 20% of the tax amount which you are paying, this will be restricted to 50 crores in case of CGST, SGST each but in case of IGST, it has to be restricted to rupees 100 crore. Are you clear with this? Okay, so whatever in case of, I will just summarize it here also if you want, in case of appellate authority, pay 100% of accepted dues. Okay, accepted dues when I am using the word means your tax, interest, penalty etc. Plus, plus 10% of tax amount which is still under dispute means to which you are not uh, agreeing. That's why you are going and filing the appeal before the AA. And this amount will be restricted to 25 crores in case of CGST, SGST each or in case of IGST, it will be restricted to 50 crore. 
are you clear with this this much amount you have to pay to the aa then only you can go ahead for the appeal and in case of pre deposit before the gst 18 okay either of the benches principal bench or whatever okay again here in this case 100% of the accepted dues has to be paid and then double of the left hand side that is 20% of the tax which is in dispute and this amount okay not 100% this to you have to pay this amount will be restricted to 50 crores in case of cgst sgst each okay or 100 crore in case of igst are you clear with this this much amount has to be paid to the this much amount this much amount of pre deposit has to be paid before filing the appeal are you clear with this yes multiple examples multiple numerical examples we have it in our textbook plus we have discussed in our lectures also regular as well as fast track now listen now suppose if you have paid this pre deposit okay taxpayer before filing he has to mandatorily mandatorily pay this pre deposit now he has paid this particular pre deposit and he wins the appeal okay if he wins the appeal then whatever tax dues was admitted that is okay but what whatever extra he has paid that 10% or 20% and let's say decision is such that he should get the refund of that tax paid okay if he should get the refund of that tax paid then he will also get a interest on the same okay interest will he is going to get the interest so interest will be received at the rate of 6% from the day when we paid this amount till the day when we are going to get the refund okay the day when we paid till the date when we are going to get the refund for that many number of days interest will be received by us at the rate of 6% provided the order is in our favor yes okay next common point which is coming up here is whenever whenever you are going and filing an appeal before aa okay means previous order was of whom previous order was of the adjudicating authority so now you are going to the aa okay or let's say now if you are going before the at means previous order was of whom previous order was of aa and before that the order was of the adjudicating authority okay now what are they telling us here is whenever you are going and filing the appeal before aa or at as the case may be okay then in that case you are normally by default not allowed to produce any additional evidence okay means whatever evidence was originally presented before adjudicating authority or before the aa as the case may be only that same evidence can be produced now before the appeals also okay don't submit any new evidence now okay but this is a by default rule because otherwise see if you are submitting any new evidence can we say because of that the decision can change and because you did not submit it to the earlier authority the earlier authority was not able to give a correct decision so they have put a by default rule that please don't submit any new additional evidence in the appeals later okay use the same documents which you had submitted earlier but there are four exceptions to that okay first one suppose what if the old authorities what if the old authorities did not accept they refused to accept the evidence then you can now submit it okay or second one when the old authorities asked you for the evidence but you could not they called for the evidence but you could not submit it due to some sufficient cause okay maybe for example they told you to submit a bank account statement okay but you could not get it from the bank on time not because of your fault so in such cases so in such cases when they called for the evidence but you could not submit it due to sufficient cause now if you have got it then okay submit it right third one the old authorities did not call for that evidence but it was relevant for your appeal so you should have submitted it but you could not submit it because of a sufficient cause what is the difference between the second one and the third one second one was they called for the evidence but you could not submit it third one they did not call it but you should have submitted it because it is a relevant evidence but i could not submit it due to some sufficient cause so now you can submit it right and the last one if the old authorities pass the order without giving you a sufficient opportunity of being heard or without giving you reasonable opportunity of being heard then in that case then in that case the you can produce some additional evidence before the appeal authorities okay these four points are given here in your textbook okay what is the by default rule by default rule is appellant is not allowed to produce any additional evidence which he had not produced at the earlier levels 
earlier levels but in these four cases he can submit those additional evidence are you clear with this and whenever yes now whenever we are accepting whenever the aa or at is accepting this new evidence they will make a note of it in writing and the respondent that is the opposite party should also be given an option to check those witnesses documents etc are you clear till here yes okay now one more point here common point whenever the case is going on okay whenever the case is going on before adjudicating authority okay adjudicating authority or whenever the case is going on before the aa or whenever the case is going on before the gst at okay i am not talking about high court and supreme court whenever the case is going on at these three levels then either that particular person either that same taxpayer can go and represent the case okay or when it is not necessary for him to go in person then in that case an a ar ar authorized representative can be appointed okay authorized representative on behalf of the taxpayer can be appointed to represent before the authorities now that authorized representative can be whom he can be he can be a he can be a relative of that taxpayer a regular employee advocate ca cost accountant company secretary or a gst practitioner okay these people can act as our authorized representative and also if there is any indirect tax gazetted officer or gst officers okay who have who have experience of 2 years okay but now they have retired from the department or now they have resigned from the department and at least one year is done from the date of their uh, resignment or uh, resignation or retirement okay means one year cooling period is to be kept after they have resigned or retired from the department and if they have 2 years of experience then even such persons can act as your authorized representative okay but if these people were dismissed or removed from the government service okay or if they were convicted of any offense under cgst sgst utgst igst or any old uh, vat laws or old service tax laws means they were convicted by court of any particular offense or if they were found guilty guilty they were just found guilty of any misconduct then in such cases the above people cannot act as your authorized representative okay either dismissed convicted of any offense or found guilty of any misconduct and one more point is if any person is adjudged as insolvent okay if any person is adjudged as insolvent then during the insolvency period during insolvency period that person cannot act, act as your authorized representative okay once his insolvency gets over then he is eligible to act as your authorized representative are you clear till here yes okay these were some of your common points which we had to do uh, before we go to appeal before high court and appeal before supreme court okay now listen in which cases will we go to high court okay if any of the party if any of the party is aggrieved by the order passed by gst at okay if we are aggrieved by the order passed by gst at that too by state bench do you recollect right hand side state bench yes if we are aggrieved by the order passed by gst at state bench then we will go and file the appeal before the high court provided it involves a question of law okay then ma'am what about gst at principal bench if the order was passed by gst at principal bench then the appeal directly goes then the appeal directly goes to the supreme court this i had told you in the beginning of the chapter also okay now uh, if we are aggrieved by the order passed by gst at state bench then appeal can be filed before the high court any of the party can go and file the appeal and this appeal this appeal can be filed within a time period of 180 days from the date of communication of the this order and plus high court can condone this period by any number of days now we are at the high court level so we cannot give a limit to the high court yes and nor we cannot we cannot even tell to the high court to complete the appeal within so and so time period right and this appeal can be filed with uh, this appeal will be filed in form number gst apl 08 gst apl 08 this is the form in which the appeal is going to be filed are you clear with this yes and uh, yes high court is going to consider this case only if it involves question of law this also means that if your case has question of facts okay means there is no issue in law interpretation there is proper case laws case studies available for that then in that case the previous authority that is gst at is going to be the final decision making authority but only if it has question of law then only high court will consider this particular matter 
yes now if we are aggrieved by this order of high court okay if we are aggrieved by this order of high court and if high court certifies that this is a fit case to be decided by the supreme court then only this case will come further to the supreme court did you understand high court gave a decision any one of the party is not happy with that we want to go to the supreme court supreme court will take my case only if high court certifies that it is a fit one to go to the supreme court that is one case or any directly direct who has an approach to the who has a opportunity to approach the supreme court if any order was passed by gat gst at principal bench then they can directly come to the supreme court but provided provided it also has some question of law involved in it are you clear with this yes and for supreme court there is no time period for going and filing the appeal are you clear with this everyone yes manageable okay so when we talk about high court which cases can come to high court any order which is passed by gst at state bench okay that comes to the high court okay which case comes to the supreme court any order passed by gst at principal bench principal bench that can come to supreme court directly or if we are aggrieved by the order passed by the high court and if high court certifies it to be a fit one then it comes to the supreme court okay and final decision making authority is going to be your supreme court against which there can be no appeals possible are you clear till here yes and then the last two sections of the chapter that is section number 120 and section number 121 very simple but very important from exam point of view okay section number 120 says that in some cases department will be given a restriction okay means there will be a restriction on the cgst officers that they cannot file appeals now we had already seen that before appellate authority before gst at before high court even department can come and file the appeal okay but section 120 says that we are going to set some monetary limits okay we are going to set some monetary limits and only if the tax amount exceeds that monetary limit then only departmental appeals can be filed there is no such limit for tax payer huh? this monetary limit will be applicable only when the department wants to go and file the appeal because many a times it happens that unnecessarily just because the decision goes in the favor of tax payer department says why how can it happen it should not happen so they simply go and file the appeal even if it does not have some substance in it right so the law says that we are going to set some monetary limits only if the amount of tax involved in the dispute if it exceeds this monetary limit then only appeal can be filed in that particular case that does not mean that the department cannot go for appeal in other cases that is if there is any similar cases okay if there is any similar matter under appeal where the monetary limit is exceeding then that person then the officer can go and file the appeal okay next point that they are telling us here is department if it is not able to go and file the appeal because of monetary limits does not mean that department has accepted the decision given by the old authority okay department is not accepting the decision given by that authority but still because of the monetary limits the department is unable to go and file the appeal doesn't mean that department has accepted the uh, authority's order right and last one even the appellate authority should consider the reasons why the department wanted to file an appeal okay The, the the this particular the appellate tribunal or the court they will also consider the circumstances for non filing of appeal because of monetary limits which were and these monetary limits yes these are fixed by the cbic yeah? so uh, in some cases it can even so happen that monetary limit is not exceeding okay still appellate tribunal or court may accept the appeal okay so crux of this particular section is this restriction is first of all applicable only on the department whenever the department wanted to file the appeal department will have to check whether the amount is exceeding the monetary limits or not if it is not exceeding then appeal by departments cannot be accepted yes and now coming on to the last section that is section number 121 121 is such a section where they are telling that four orders are given there where they are telling that appeal is not possible as well as revision of the following orders is not possible you cannot do you cannot go for appeal against these four types of orders ma'am which are those orders okay suppose if suppose if the commissioner 
has transferred my case okay if suppose commissioner has transferred my case from one officer to another okay then in that case i cannot say that why did you transfer no it is non appealable okay next if there was any order for seizure of books of accounts registers etc passed then that order is non appealable okay if there is any order for prosecution passed that is imprisonment fine etc then also appeal cannot be filed okay revision appeal nothing can be done and last if any order was passed under section 80 for payment of taxes in installment 24 monthly installments if any order was passed under that particular section i cannot go for an appeal against that okay so four orders one where i am proceeding was transferred from one officer to another order for seizure of books registers etc was passed prosecution order was passed or section 80 order where i was either allowed or disallowed to pay the tax in installments again that appeal is also not possible even revision is also not possible are you clear till here yes this was all about this was all about the appeals provisions appeals and revisions under your gst and uh just try to study this chapter in parts okay first level of appeal second level of appeal third level fourth level the chapter will be very very simple